News First Alert Meteorologist Mallory Schnell on News Radio 1110 KFAB. Schrock Innovations presents the Midwest's number one independent computer repair company with service centers in Lincoln, Omaha, Papillion, Des Moines, and across the country via the Schrock Desk. This is Compute This. Morning, folks, and welcome in to Compute This. My name is Thor Schrock. I'm the owner of the Schrock Innovations Computer Company with service centers in, count them, one, two, three, four locations to help you out when you're having trouble with your computer, when that uh, hard drive has failed and you can't seem to get the data off of it, uh, you know, if you need a website done for your business, maybe your email's not working quite right, we're here to help you out. The original location, at 7501 South 15th Street. That's just uh, south of 14th and Pine Lake Road in Lincoln, Nebraska. Then we opened up in Omaha, 168th and Burke, just across the street from the Village Point Mall uh, over there, right across the street from Best Buy, actually. Uh, and then in Papillion, 84th and Highway 370 inside the Midlands Place Shopping Center. And then the newest Schrock Innovations, Baby Schrock. I can't keep calling. It's going to be Teenage Schrock soon, I think. I don't know. Uh, 9500 University Avenue in West Des Moines, Iowa. Uh, doing great over there. I want to say a big shout out and thank you for all the people who come out and support our service center there and, and choose Schrock to help them out with their technology needs. The number to join us on the program this morning is 888-250-2091. 888-250-2091. As we do every week, we will be giving away a $25 Schrock Innovations gift certificate. Uh, good for anything your heart desires over at the service center. Uh, all you have to do is uh, give us a call, be a part of the program, uh, ask a question, make a comment, tell us about an experience that you had at the shops or, you know, or with your computer. And we're uh, happy to help you out because if you have a question, um, they told you this in grade school, but if you have a question, there are other people that have the same question, but they're just too afraid to ask. So by you asking the question, Putting yourself out there, you're helping out a lot of other people who are listening at the same time here as well. All right, so last week, if you missed the show last week, it was it was busy. <laughs> it was one of the fullest shows we've had in a while. Um, we talked about uh, the maintenance checkup sale wrapping up. Uh, today actually is the final day for that, so I wanted to make sure we're going to talk about that a little bit. Just so you, if you missed out on that before, maybe you were traveling or on vacation. <laughs> on vacation, yay! Uh, you know, maybe maybe you weren't at home and you missed that. And uh, you know, wow, twenty twenty one is so awesome. Uh, yeah, if that was the case, you know, we can definitely help you out there and, and let you know what's going on with that. Uh, we had a big show about Apple last week, uh, and I got a lot of feedback, a lot of emails from people thanking me for covering Apple uh, because apparently, I guess we don't do that enough. Um, but, you know, realistically, they only come out with a few different products and they only come out with them once a year. So it, it's nothing. I don't know. that Maybe you could do an entire show on Apple. I'm sure there's a radio professional out there that could do an entire Apple show every week. But there was a preponderance of Apple news last week that needed to be covered. And it just so happened to all hit in the same week. So we talked about the new M1 IMAX uh, that are coming out. No, it doesn't come with a free rifle, different kind of M1. Um, but the M1 IMAX that with those new M1 processors in them, they're, they're just phenomenally fast. Um, the computers are also phenomenally fragile and ph phenomenally unified, as in there is nothing to repair or replace. Um, so one of the things we talked about is how they're going to be an amazing source of performance for creative people. They're going to be, if you use Photoshop, if you use uh, Adobe, the Adobe suite, uh, if you you know, are designing buildings and doing engineering work, the M1 processor is going to revolutionize the work that you do. But if you're also used to having a Mac that lasts you a decade or so, these aren't going to be that. They're, they're not going to last that long. They can't be repaired. They can't be upgraded. You can't even boot off external media anymore, like like a, like a hard an external hard drive, or you can't back up an image uh, of your hard drive so that if your computer fails, you could just boot off that image. You can't do that anymore with the new Macs. Uh, so there is a little bit of change going on there as well. Uh, we gave you a heads up last week on uh, the new iOS 14.5. Uh, we warned you that there was a new one coming out. I would still sit back a bit on this. Um, as far as iOS updates go, give it another week. Um, so far, not not any real big problems. Um, more so, just not working quite as advertised. The, the privacy tracking suite is an absolute mess right now. Um, I don't know that we'll have time to talk a whole lot about that in the show today, but we will have time to talk about that in the aftershock. But basically, after this new update, 
every app on your phone, if it tries to track you, is supposed to ask your permission. Um, and, and everyone was expecting a nice, unified Apple prompt coming up in your face asking permission. But instead, you're getting this weird hodgepodge. Some apps are not prompting at all. People are wondering, am I getting tracked? Uh, you're not. Apple is just returning garbage data to them, you know, all zeros for your tracking ID. So Apple still got your back, but it's a little weird because people are, sometimes you're getting a customized prompt from an app that's not. It doesn't look like an Apple prompt, so people are wondering: Is this a real prompt or is this fake? Should I trust this? Um, so there's a little bit of cleanup is going to have to happen. It's a new feature rollout. Even former Apple engineers are like, "This is a mess." Um, it's effective but it's messy, and that's not something people have come to expect from their Apple devices. Clean, crisp, refined, those are words that you would normally use to describe an Apple device, not, you know, slapped together and, you know, coming up looking three different ways on different phones and different apps having different interfaces, and it, it's just weird. So they'll get it cleaned up. It's just going to take a little bit of time. There have been some reports of battery drain. Uh, that's pretty common every time there is an iOS update. Um, part of the thing there is... Apple is a master of, you know, of, a, of the swan approach. So you just see a beautiful iPhone sailing across the surface or a beautiful Mac floating along. And underneath the water, there is some furious churning going on. And so what ends up happening is a lot of people don't realize that their phone is still doing the update when it, they think it's done. And so under the hood, things are still just cranking away. So the phone gets hot. The battery drains down for maybe an afternoon after you, after you do it. Give it a couple days, a couple charge recharge cycles to norm out, and you should be okay again. Um, so like I said, not a lot of problems with this one. More just inconsistencies, inconveniences, things like that. Uh, give it another week. It should all be smoothed out for you there. Uh, also, last week we talked about an increasing, an alarming increase in the number of ransomware affections impacting everyday people, not just businesses anymore. Of course, we talked about Apple getting hit with a huge ransomware attack because it was the Apple show, right? Um, but it's happening to regular people too. And we told you some steps that you could take to defend yourself. So if you missed the show last week, it is up on our website at schrockinnovations.com. You can click on radio show. Uh, I know we're broadcasting right now live on Facebook at facebook.com slash schrockinnovations. Uh, Winston's telling me the audio levels sound good. Thank you, top fan Winston. I appreciate it. You are clear to go get your lovely wife donuts. Um, yeah, never going to let it go. The... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, if you uh, if you missed the show, you can watch them on our website. Also, they are on YouTube as well as Rumble. A couple of weeks ago, YouTube hit one of the aftershocks with an age restriction, as if we were talking about inappropriate things that, you know, kids couldn't hear about. Um, you know, we pretty much, the, the show is a little bit looser, the aftershock that we do on Facebook after the show, but, I mean, we still keep it family appropriate. You know, it's it's... Shouldn't I don't know what and you can you can appeal it. And I'm like, I don't really care because you can watch it on Rumble. If YouTube doesn't want the views, if they don't want the eyeballs on their ads, go watch it on Rumble. Good to go. 888-250-2091. Now, coming up on the program today, uh, as I mentioned, today is the last day for the maintenance checkup sale. Um, once or twice a year, depending on how the promotional calendar rolls out, uh, we put maintenance checkups on special for about half off. Uh a lot of people. And I mean a lot of people. Last year, we sold more hardware in a single year. We sold probably two years worth of hardware in a single year. But that came at the expense of pretty much every service offering we had. Um, nobody wanted in-home installs. Nobody was coming in for preventative maintenance checkups throughout the pandemic. Um, you know, Nobody wanted us to come out to their house and replace their modem or their router, for example. Um, lots and lots of people buying new computers. Not a lot of people having work done on them or related to them. So with that said, a lot of you out there have deferred maintenance. Is what we'll, just, we'll, we'll call it deferred maintenance. Your dentist wouldn't call it deferred maintenance. Your dentist would call it, you've got cavities. Uh, but you know, we'll call it deferred maintenance. You know, you, you've put that off for a year. You were supposed to be in twice last year, but you haven't done that. And now we're almost halfway through 2021. Can you believe that? You know, <laughs> it's May, guys. Next month is the halfway mark for the year. Next month is Christmas. You know, well, I guess it'd be Christmas in June. But, you know, 60 days from now, it's Christmas in July. Okay? So you've put it off for a year and a half, assuming that you got some maintenance before that in, you know, the previous year, in 19. So you're due. Your computer is struggling to keep up with what you're trying to ask it to do already. A lot of people bought 
consumer grade systems and are asking them to function in a work from home environment as if they are office workstations. And people are starting to realize why it is that businesses buy workstations and not personal computers. Because a personal computer is intended to be used by a person for personal things. In other words, when they say it's going to last a couple of years, they mean using it a couple hours a day. It'll last a couple of years, maybe three. Using it eight hours a day for more intense activity than, than they intended it to be used for, it can certainly do those things. It can flex up and make those things happen. You might go six months, a year, two years, maybe, without having any problems, and then the world's going to fall out from under you. Uh, we've talked a lot about how we've seen a, a significant uptick in the number of bad hard drives, for example. Uh, Drive Advisor uh, detected a 0.01% increase, which... I know it sounds stupid. 0.01%. It's like I'm talking about vaccines or something. 0.01% increase. But statistically, that is very significant. That's hundreds of hard drives failing more than normal. Why are we seeing this ticking up? And it hasn't been one tick. It's been a rhythmic tick. Every couple of weeks, I come back and I give you the newest drive advisor numbers. And the, I think we're at 14.9 today. 14.9% of all hard drives scanned are bad. So right now, if you don't have DriveAdvisor installed in your computer, there's a 14.9% chance your hard drive is bad and you don't even know it. Deferred maintenance. So take this opportunity, guys, to get a maintenance checkup done in any of our four service centers at your convenience. Now, we have bench spots open. That's the tail end of the sale. So the people who came in early have come in early. The people that procrastinate have bought a certificate. <laughs> and so now the bench is getting relatively light. We're getting into those summer months when people are traveling, kids are getting out of school. It's a great time to bring those computers into the service center because we have the time to work on them quickly and get them right back to you within 24 to 48 hours. So you can get back up and running again. So you can bring it in at your convenience and get the maintenance checkup for $49.99. Normally, it's $90 for eight hours of work on average. For $50, it's a steal. Now, let's say maybe you are already traveling or you're planning on it. You don't have time. You need it every day for work, but you have a vacation coming up. Whatever the case might be, you can go on our website to schrockinnovations.com, click on Shop, and then click on Specials, and you can purchase a certificate. What the certificate does for you is you're paying for the maintenance checkup now at the sale price, but you have six months of time in which you can use that certificate. So smart mammals will come in for a maintenance checkup now, get this one done, knowing that there may not be another one this year. Then once they get it back, they'll buy a certificate that they can use six months from now. So I would suggest you, if you can't make it into the service center to have this maintenance done, Check out the website, schrockinnovations.com. Pick up a certificate for $49.99, plus a pickable state and local taxes, of course. And make sure that you get the maintenance that you've been deferring, the maintenance that you need for your computer. All right, so also coming up on the program today, um, did you install a contact tracing app in your phone during the pandemic? Uh, Apple and Google came together in a kumbaya moment. You know, we can't get FaceTime on Android, but... We can kumbaya about uh, contact tracing. And we can, we can make sure that if inf two infected people meet in a bar somewhere, the CDC will know about it. Turns out the contact tracing app is leaking data. This is what everybody was afraid of. It's leaking data about what you tell the app. So if you are co the whole idea of the app was to protect your privacy. So no, you, nobody knows who you're... Bluetooth identifier is, and if you tell your app that you were diagnosed positive with COVID-19, no one knows who you are, except anybody with access to the logs. Oops. Uh, yeah, so we're going to tell you about that. If you have that on your phone, what you're risking there. Also, Facebook, or Facebook, Firefox is releasing a new version, version 87, and it's taking out, a, uh, it's taking tracking blocking to a whole new level. So we have, on one hand, we have Apple, and I'll making apps request permission to track you. And Firefox is taking the approach of, well, you know, we went really hardcore and we blew up all the, the trackers and the cookies and everything else that were following you on the internet and showing you all those ads. But then some websites didn't work quite right. So just like Apple gives garbage data to apps that haven't recoded themselves yet to, to not ask for that ID, Firefox is 
faking, <laughs> they're literally faking the advertising data to make sure scripts on websites run better. Uh, so we're going to tell you what's going on there with Firefox. Uh, and as we've talked about in the past, Firefox is a real struggle. They get a lot of their money from Google, uh, and they're really struggling to remain relevant in a world dominated by Google Chrome. Uh, and so we're going to tell you what uh, what the latest is from the privacy-focused Firefox browser coming up on the program. Also, have you heard this story about U.S. agencies bypassing the Fourth Amendment? For those of you who don't know what the Fourth Amendment is, you have the, the right of privacy from your federal government. They can't rifle, they can't come into your home and rifle through your papers. Well, I suppose they can, but they have to get a warrant first, right? But agencies, federal agencies, were getting around this by purchasing your personal information from data brokerage houses that are collecting it on their own. See, it's not against your rights for a private company to collect personal data about you as a citizen and then sell that data to the federal government. So it's a loophole, right? So there's a new bill that's been introduced. We're going to talk about that on the program, how this was happening, what kind of information was the government actually getting, and uh, – and, how long has it been going on and who's doing it? Uh, you heard, I heard the post office is tracking social media posts. I'm like, they can't even deliver my mail. I'm totally not worried about the post office tracking people on social media. The post office can't track a package. I'm sorry if you're a mail carrier working on a Sunday. I love you. This is like one of those, you know, <laughs> we, love the, we love the employees, but dang, that system. Tell me, tell me you guys have ordered. You get a tracking notification that your package has arrived a week after you have opened it and, and you're already using whatever it is you ordered when you get it USPS. I mean, literally, the tracking data is garbage. Um, if you order something on Amazon and the last leg is delivered by USPS, every single Sunday, something gets tried to deliver to one of our service centers. Every Sunday. And every Sunday I get notifications, sorry, no one was around to take your package, so we couldn't deliver it. Yeah, right. Right. We got people in the service center all day long. What do you mean there was nobody there? No, nope, USPS just decided not to deliver the package uh, that day. And they, they report to Amazon we weren't there so that they, their numbers don't get impacted. So I'm really not worried about USPS tracking social media posts. Just not a concern. A um, bigger concern is they might attribute someone else's post to me. Um, you know, as a, as just like a letter going to the wrong mailbox, you know, something like that. It happens sometimes. That I'd be more concerned about that than actually having them tracking the post. But there is legit data that's being purchased by the federal government, including your live real-time location. Uh, and so that's something that uh, that we want to definitely cover on the program today. 888-250-2091. We've got to take our first break of the program. When we come back, the contact tracing app on your phone that's leaking your healthcare data, and also Microsoft's big 20H1 update. I think we have a launch date or a, a possible launch date, a rumored launch date, we're going to tell you when this big update is coming out that you want to run your safe upgrade for coming up next on Compute This. Update all of your third-party apps on your computer with Secure Updater. It keeps all your apps running smoothly and helps block viruses. Download it for free today at secureupdater.com. Some people like desktops for their power and upgradability, but nothing rivals a laptop for computing on the go. But why should you have to sacrifice performance for portability? The innovators at Schrock want our customers to have it all. So we created a new kind of laptop, the Solid State Laptop from Schrock Innovations. Solid State Laptops are built using the same frame and main boards as regular laptops, but we've removed half of the moving parts while more than doubling the computer's speed. The result? Laptops that boot to Windows in six seconds or less, respond instantly to your commands, and can survive drops that put most laptops into the data recovery lab. Starting at only $4.99, Solid State Laptops give you speed, reliability, durability, and performance for the same price most people pay for a cheap disposable laptop. The next time you're looking for a laptop, check out the Solid State Laptops at SchrockInnovations.com or visit any of our service centers. Simple, solid, fast technology is what we do at Schrock. Compute this Pro Tip 299. There are enough mothballed computers in U.S. homes to give one to every man, woman, and child in the country. Many of these computers find their way into landfills where they can leak cadmium, lithium, and other nasty chemicals into the groundwater. Schrock Innovations is very proud of the fact that we recycle more e-waste every year than we create. You can drop off any old or broken computer equipment to our service centers at any time, free of cost. We only charge $15 just for monitors because they are especially difficult to process. 
No appointment is required, and we accept all computer-related equipment like printers, keyboards, speakers, and accessories. Additionally, the rare earth elements in computers can be recycled right here in the U.S. to reduce our reliance on supplies from foreign countries. Take a moment, drop off your old computer equipment today, and Schrock will make sure it's properly recycled and put to good use right here in the U.S. This pro tip brought to you by Schrock Innovations Computer Company. Alrighty, folks, welcome back into Compute This. My name is Thor Schrock. I'm the owner of the Schrock Innovations Computer Company, uh, where we are actually one of the best equipped data recovery facilities in the Midwest. Uh, we have two DDI4 imagers. I know that makes that doesn't mean anything. Uh, we have a PC3000. Uh, yeah, you know, we got all these super high tech pieces of equipment that are designed to help us recover data from devices when those devices failed. We did a server last week for a client. We do hard drives every day of the week. Uh, we have a clean room. We swap heads. We do the whole bit. And we do it for about 50% of the cost that you would expect to spend at a national data recovery house. Why do we do it so much cheaper? Well, number one, you know, once you've recovered the cost of the equipment that you've purchased, the, the cost per recovery is much lower than a lot of people think. Um, and so when you, when you call somebody and they quote you $1,900 to recover a hard drive, you know, and we say we can do it for $1,300, um, or $800. The reason we can do it for, or even 400 is the entry price. That's where you start out at data recovery. The reason we can do it for those prices is because we're a local company. We have bought the hardware, we recoup the cost of the hardware. And now we are competing against much larger entities with huge marketing budgets that are competing all over Google for every click you can get. So you know how we're going to compete? We're going to provide people with award-winning service at a price that is unimaginably low for the level of service that we're delivering. And we're doing that by automating a lot of our internal tasks. So the great news here, guys, is if you have a data recovery situation, it's one of the worst possible feelings in the world when you have a, a device that just stops working and you're counting on that data. We can get that data back for you at Schrock Innovations. Just drop it off at any of our local service centers. Uh, all of our data recoveries are actually done, physically done, in our Omaha service center. Uh, that's where all of our equipment is stored. But we do daily transfers between all the service centers, and we can get your drive to the Omaha service center to get that data recovery processed and working for you. 888-250-2091. Um, one quick program note. We uh, we had a I, I misspoke earlier in the last segment. I said Firefox 87. It's Firefox 88 is the current version. Uh, so don't freak out if you're on 88. You're not on a beta version or anything like that. I just misspoke there. All right. So uh, Microsoft is talking about the release of 20H1. This is their big update. They do it every six months. Um, they used to be in, in March. Then they kind of got it pushed to April. And now it's pushed to May. Uh, it looks like the update is expected to release on or around the 11th of May. This is not an official date from Microsoft. That That's Patch Tuesday. That's, that's the day that Microsoft is supposed to release updates. Um, if they do release it around that date... You know, I wouldn't be shocked if it got pushed later in the month. In the past, they have not released them at the same time as a Patch Tuesday update. However, this Patch Tuesday is looking a little light, and maybe the reason for that is because they're going to push out this epically large update. Now, we call it an update. Um, it's kind of, it's weird. It's like a cross between an update and a service pack and an upgrade. So we call it an upgrade at Shrock because you're literally replacing one version of your Windows 10 operating system, 20H2, uh, the 2.0 stands for 2020. H2 stands for half two because they do it twice a year. So this one is going to be 2.1 for 2021, H1 for half one. So this is 2.1 H1. The 2.1 H1, it's not a flu. It sounds like a flu, doesn't it? The 2.1 H1 update uh, or upgrade, if you will, is going to completely replace the previous operating system on your computer with a brand new one. Functionally, it's not going to change many things that people are going to realize the average people, it's going to change some things under the hood that really, really, really advanced users might notice. But for the most part, for those of you who turn the computer on, use the computer every day to work from home or do whatever, you're not going to really notice any differences from this update. The reason for this update is it is laying the groundwork for what will be 2.1 H2 later this year. 
it is really, really important that you get this update and you get it installed in your computer and installed correctly to lay that groundwork for the one that's coming at the end of the year because that one is the big Anchorito. That one is changing all kinds of stuff. Uh, it's going to change the interfaces again. It's going to change the start menu again. Um, nothing radical, but just enough change pretty much everywhere to make Windows look different. They're trying to polish and change the UI or the user interface to make it <laughs> more Apple-like. <laughs> That's be my guess. That's what Microsoft usually does. So... All in all, this update is coming. We believe it could be coming on May 11th. That's not a certainty. Um, but if you purchased a copy of Safe Upgrade, I want to first of all let you know the update has not been released yet. But when it is released, we will find you and tell you. You, you might be in Antarctica, but you, you, you're going to get two calls when you're in Ant Antarctica. The first one is going to be about your car's warranty, and the second one is going to be about Safe Upgrade. Right. Uh, we're going to send up smoke signals. We're going we're to let you know what's going on because on or around. You know what? This is this is karma. On May 11th, I'm going to be hosting an afternoon on KFAB. I'm filling in for a four hour show on KFAB and I'm going to get in a lot of trouble. I think uh, it's going to be it's going to be hilarious on May 11th. And now we find out that May 11th is the expected date for a brand new Microsoft operating system release. Could this not be better? I mean, Welcome to my world. You know, on the one day when I'm going to be absolutely needed in the service center, I'm going to be here. Sorry, guys. You're going to have to take those calls. Oh, it's going to be great. No, the uh, the two the two one h one update is not a huge update in itself. But the problem comes in if you fall two updates or more behind on your computer, you don't get security upgrades anymore. The security updates that come out from Microsoft. So it's really important you do this. So number one, your computer should automatically install this update. The update is free. There's no charge for the update. Number two, if your computer downloads and installs the update, 80% chance everything goes great. Vast majority of the time, it goes perfectly fine. The same people, 20% of the time, every time, get hit with a problem, and those people end up in our service center paying $230 to have us fix a problem that Microsoft caused, and the only people in the world that they have to yell at is us. And so they do. They love us, but it's very frustrating, right? And so we created a product called Safe Upgrade that safely installs these updates for you, these major upgrades for you, the same way we would do it on the bench and provide you with a warranty if something goes sideways. You can purchase that on our website as well at schrockinnovations.com. Click on Shop and Specials, and you'll find that available there as well. 888-250-2091. When we come back from the break here, guys, your contact tracing app is leaking your healthcare data, and we're going to tell you what phones it's happening on and what you can do about it coming up next on Compute This. Now you can configure and purchase laptops, desktops, tablets, and more, all at the new SchrockInnovations.com. Check out our specials for one-of-a-kind discounts and deals. In 1798, Eli Whitney's Connecticut Musket Factory was the first business in North America to use replaceable parts in a firearm. Before Eli's factory, if your musket broke, you had to send it away to an expert gunsmith for repairs or just toss it and buy a new musket. Technology manufacturing has come a long way since the 18th century, but you wouldn't know it by looking at today's big box store computers. Dell, HP, Sony, and other manufacturers continue to take away your freedom to upgrade and repair your computer by eliminating expansion and repair options. Some desktops are even powered by a tiny laptop adapter. Schrock Innovations believes in Eli Whitney's idea of interchangeable and replaceable components, and that's why our custom-built modular computers last longer and cost less to repair than computers computers you see at big box stores. Ask your friends and family how often they replace their box store computers and they'll probably tell you every couple of years. And what do they do with the old machines? They just get thrown out like broken muskets. Imagine a place where your computer's problems can be fixed quickly and inexpensively. Imagine keeping your computer for six years or more. You are imagining the kind of computers we build every day at Schrock Innovations. Our modular systems last longer, perform faster, and cost less over the long term than anything you can buy at a big box store. While the talented technicians at Schrock Innovations can't make you a musket even if they tried, our commitment to the freedom offered by modular computers is the modern-day extension of Eli's innovative musket factory. We think Eli Whitney would be proud, and you can take pride in owning a small piece of American innovation, the modular computer from Schrock Innovations. 
compute this Pro Tip 843. Of all computer failures, the scariest and most expensive is the hard drive. But there are some steps you can take to save money and save your data before it's too late. Detecting failures early is important, so install a free utility like DriveAdvisor from driveadvisor.com to monitor your hard drive's health and receive warnings when there's a problem. But most of all, hard drive failures happen slowly, so early detection is key to reducing the repair bill. Second, if your hard drive makes any unusual noises, immediately turn off your computer and do not turn it on again. These issues are physical problems, and the more you try to use it, the worse the damage becomes. Remember that most computer repair shops do not have the specialized equipment needed to recover data from a failed drive. Never open your drive or allow anyone else to do so. Open drives always cost more to recover. Troc does not charge for data recovery evaluations and quotes, so let the local pros look at your drive before you make any recovery decisions. This pro tip brought to you by Troc Innovations Computer Company. Fox News, I'm Karen McHugh. Another shooting, this one in Green Bay, Wisconsin. A gunman walked into the Oneida Casino restaurant around 7.30 p.m. Saturday. It appears to be a targeted event, not a uh, random shooting. Uh, it was a, targeting a specific victim who was not there, but he decided to still shoot uh, some of the victim's friends or co-workers, it appears. Kevin Pollack of the Brown County Sheriff's Office. Two people were killed, a third seriously wounded. Responding officers then killed the shooter. His identity not yet known. SpaceX, Texas Dragon, over 4 Gs, 42 kilometers. The four astronauts on board the SpaceX Dragon capsule heard there moments before their spacecraft made a successful nighttime splashdown in the Gulf of Mexico. The three American and one Japanese crew members had been on board the International Space Station for 160 Seven days. America is listening to Fox News. Now, the News Radio 1110 KFAB Weather Watch. Starting off the day with sunshine, temperatures in the 60s will warm into the low to mid 80s this afternoon with more clouds around, winds gusting up to 25 miles per hour. Storm chances increase from the northwest after 7 p.m. with lingering showers and storms tonight and into Monday morning. With Omaha's most accurate forecast, I'm 6 News First Alert meteorologist Mallory Schnell on News Radio 1110 KFAB. All righty, folks, welcome back in. Thanks for sticking with us through the break there. I hope everybody got their potty breaks and their coffee refills and you're ready to go with donuts and everything else you need because we got another half of the program coming up here on Compute This. My name's Thor Schrock. I'm the owner of the Schrock Innovations Computer Company. I want to send a thank you out to the caller who called in and let me know that there was an issue with the price for the maintenance certificate on the website. Apparently, those mean guys in accounting said the month is over Thor said the maintenance special was only supposed to go for a month. And the guys in marketing said, wouldn't it be great to end it on a Sunday so Thor could talk about it? And so now I've got the uh, the sale restored. So it was like, no, it's $90. You don't get a sale price, you bad, 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 bad child. Now it's forty nine ninety nine again, and it will be through midnight tonight. <laughs> as long as I didn't break anything. Maybe it's going to be that price forever. I don't know. That's why I don't supposed to do this stuff. 888-250-2091. Those are the numbers to join us on the program. Ask a question, make a comment, let us know that the sale price is wrong on the website, and we'll get you in the drawing for a $25 Schrock Innovations gift certificate. All right, so contact tracing. Um, for those of you who've been living under a rock, the idea behind contact tracing is when somebody gets sick, then we go back and we look at every place that person went. And then we find out who else were, was in those places and let them know that they may have come in contact with somebody who was sick. And the idea here would be to stop the spread of an illness uh, by basically isolating people who were in contact with the sick person. With COVID, it became problematic because so many people got it and it was so uh, contagious and nobody really knew a lot about it. So if one person with COVID goes to a bar, does everybody in the bar have to quarantine at home for two weeks to see if they get COVID? You know, it, it got to be pretty intense, right? So we, we know that there's like a, 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 a distance, right? You know, if you're in, in the same building as somebody with COVID, that doesn't mean you're going to get COVID. If you're sitting in a chair next to someone who's going to get COVID, we all heard the stories like, all I did was drive my sick neighbor to the hospital and the next day I came down with COVID too because it came through the vents and the air in the car. Even though we had the windows down and everything, it didn't matter. It's like the super disease that comes after everybody. You know, we heard all those stories in the news and so nobody really knew what to think, right? So big tech decided 
wouldn't it be great if there was a way for us to let everybody know if they were exposed to somebody else who later tested positive for COVID? And Bluetooth is a great technology because, you know, it, it, we can measure signal strength, so we can kind of see what's this person within six feet of you, were they in 40 feet of you? Uh, and after 40 feet, it gets a little sketchy on how well Bluetooth actually works. But we need all the phones to work together. And so it doesn't, it's, it won't be enough for just Apple phones to have it for Apple and then just Google phones to have it for Google. We got to have everybody talking to each other. You know, that doesn't even happen in reality right now. I mean, come on. People don't talk to each other anymore, but the phones have to, you see, especially when it comes to something as serious as contact tracing. So Apple and Google got together and said, you know what, we're going to have like, a, I remember when I was a kid um, in the Clinton era and they had a Republican and I think James Carville was the Democrat. I can't remember who the Republican was. And they were sitting on the steps of the Capitol next to each other after a session of Congress got out and they were sharing, they, well, they weren't sharing a Coke. They were having a each having their own Coke together because that would have been weird if they were both drinking the same Coke. Right. Uh, but it was like, it was like a Coke moment where everybody could get together and, and, and just enjoy each other's company. Well, that's what Apple and Google were doing. They're having a Coke moment. You see, except in Google's implementation of the contact tracing app on every Android phone where it's enabled, all of the data about what the phone has detected as well as any data you provided to the phone for example, if you were COVID positive and you told the app you were, because that was the only way the app knew. So it was a completely self-reporting anyway. So it was kind of dubious how well the system was going to work anyway. Uh, but it, because it was anonymous, everyone said, well, of course, people will, will report that they were positive to the app. Um, it stored that stuff in unencrypted system logs in an accessible area of the phone. So pretty much any app called a privileged app, so a pre-installed app that came with your phone, has the ability to access that area. Uh, on, a, on a standard Samsung phone, there are 89 privileged apps that come with the phone. Uh, on a, I think there were in different phones, there's different numbers. 89 seem to be the highest. Uh, some of them were as low as 11. But these privileged apps were pre-installed with the phone and had the ability. Sometimes it was a carrier-based app or something, but they had the ability to read the system logs. And because the logs were stored in plain text and not encrypted, that means any data in the logs, including, and they said, of course, you know, this data is anonymized. So you had your own personal descriptor, you know, your own personal thing uh, that was a number that represented you. It wasn't like your name. But the problem was, if you take the information from that scenario and you combine it with information from other big data sources, it becomes very easy to figure out who is who. And it also becomes easy to figure out who everybody came in contact with. From a marketing perspective, what a dream come true. I can now, using your contact tracing data on your Google phone, figure out when you were at hy V, how many people were around you at hy V at the time of day you were in hy V. That, that kind of information is really important from a marketing perspective because I can decide when I'm going to do different advertising on the radio on billboard, on television, based on when I think people are going to go grocery shopping. Now I also know who went grocery shopping. Is there a trend between income demographics? Do certain people of certain, who shops in the middle of the night? Who shops in the afternoon? Who shops in the morning? Do you know that some stores and some places have surge pricing at grocery stores? The, the stores that have the electronic shelf tags? Because people get off work at five o'clock and go to the grocery store to buy dinner. So the grocery store may surge price a little bit and raise the prices just a percent or two between five and seven o'clock. Now I know the income of the people who shop at my store between five and seven o'clock because I know who you are because I got your contact tracing data and I purchased it from some other app. It's, it's real bad. So Google is promising that they're going to fix this in a future implementation. In the meantime, I don't know how many people with Google phones actually installed the contact tracing app. You had to turn on the function. First of all, you had to turn on the function in your phone. Then you had to install an app from your health department that did the contact tracing. So I'm not sure how many people actually did that. But if you did, please know that any information you put into that phone is certainly not private at this point. I mean, rocket science, did you think it was before? But it's not private. 
888-250-2091. Firefox 88 is introducing a feature, perfecting a feature uh, called Smart Block for private browsing. Now, Smart Block is pretty cool. Um, what it does is first Firefox tried to just block all trackers. And when they blocked all the trackers, what ended up happening is some websites broke. So they would break because they would take forever to load because it was timing out waiting for a script. Uh, so it's waiting, it's waiting, it's waiting, and then boom, the script comes up. Um, rather than having Firefox look like a laggard browser in the speed category, Firefox decided we're going to send garbage data back to these scripts. So all the advertising scripts, after a while, you've seen them all from a programming perspective. And so they coded Firefox to actually respond to these individual scripts, sending them garbage data about who they were tracking. The script was pleased to get the garbage data. It thought it had done its job. It allowed the web page to load successfully. So browsing speed on Firefox, you should notice an uptick on the browsing speed and the page load times, uh, and your privacy is still protected. So I have to tell you guys, uh, the, the stuff that Firefox is doing from a privacy perspective, um, they're really, really leading the pack. They're pulling Google to some extent along behind them. Uh, unfortunately, Google is the primary source of funding for Firefox, uh, because uh, Google is the default search engine whenever you install a Firefox installation on a computer because Google pays them a bajillion dollars a year to make sure that happens. Um, so if at any point Google decides that Firefox is a problem, they will just pull their funding and the nonprofit Fi Mozilla Foundation will probably go bankrupt at that point. Um, so Firefox exists at the, uh, at the pleasure of the G, at, at the pleasure of the alphabet. And... Uh, when they want it gone, they can get rid of it. In the meantime, um, Microsoft just continues to tick Google off by making Edge Chromium. So Edge is now Google Chrome. You probably noticed the icon change um, where it, it, it was a more stylized icon. If you use Microsoft Edge now, you're actually using the open source version of Chromium, which is what the Google Chrome browser is built upon. Um, so it's basically Google Chrome without Google spyware replaced with Microsoft spyware instead. So there you go. Fun times in the browser wars of the 21st century. 888-250-2091. Um, Want to make sure I mention here, uh, we are going to do a little a quick uh, aftershock here after the program. I apologize we didn't have one last week. Uh, we will have one this week. Uh, we've got a new crypto coin causing p potential hard drive shortages. Um, so if you are building a new computer or you are somebody who has been looking for a new hard drive, I would encourage you to purchase that hard drive, especially if it's a larger drive, sooner rather than later. Uh, we're also going to talk about uh, the Bitcoin and Ethereum price rallies coming up. So we got some crypto news to talk about. Uh, this week in the service center, I have to tell you the... Uh, uh, the chai the chai coin thing has taken my technicians by storm. They're all they're all farming this stuff, this crypto coin, this new one uh, on their personal computers at home. Uh, I see them checking their checking their plots and their farms, and I just thought, how appropriate, right? Here's a bunch of guys in Nebraska farming cryptocurrency, because you know that's what we grow here. <laughs> so uh, so fun times there. So we've got a fun aftershock plan for you today. We're going to do that on Facebook at facebook.com slash Schrock Innovations at the conclusion of the program. Don't worry. If you don't do the Facebook thing, you'll be able to watch it afterwards. Usually by the end of the day, Monday, we have it up on our website at schrockinnovations.com, and you can watch it on YouTube or Rumble there. 888-250-2091. I mentioned earlier in the program um, and I'm genuinely concerned about this because we're going to see uh, an increase in the hard drive prices coming. Um, and I mentioned Drive Advisor earlier in the show. Uh, I didn't give you guys any real context about it, though. Drive Advisor is a free program that Schrock Innovations makes. It's driveadvisor, -E com that is intended to monitor the health of the hard drive in your computer and let you know when your hard drive is starting to fail when it's still early, when the failure is small, when the failure may not even qualify for a warranty replacement from Dell or HP or anybody like that. Uh, but at least you know it's failing and we can give you some options on how to deal with it. If you have a Schrock modular computer and Drive Advisor sets off a ding that your hard drive is going bad and it's under warranty, we just replace the drive immediately. We would rather deal with a bad hard drive that's at 99% health and get all of your data back then have to make you wait until it fails completely so that you have to pay for a data recovery to get your data back. Because when you tell someone their hard drive is failing, the first thing they always do is immediately back up the hard drive because they haven't done one recently, which is the absolute worst thing you can do to a failing hard drive. Backing up a failing hard drive is, is stressful. 
And stressing something that's failing is never good, right? So if we're going to stress a bad hard drive, I would rather stress it by cloning it onto a stable hard drive. Stress it one time, as opposed to you stressing it at home and then bringing it into us and having us stress it again when we clone it. Um, so we try to give you options. We try to let you know what the threat is. But basically, when a hard drive goes from 100% health to 99% health, it is the computer equivalent to a heart attack in a human. And when your hard drive is at 77% health, it's pretty much like Dick Cheney, okay? You know, it, it needs a pacemaker at that point to keep running, or it, you really, really, really need a new hard drive. I got an alert this week of one of our customers. Their C drive dropped to 3% health. I don't know if they drop kicked their computer. I don't know if they dropped it in a lake. I, I don't know what happened. Was it a crazy boating accident? Was it a bathtub dunk? I don't know what happened. Did the kids get it? Did the dog grab it and chew, treat it like a chew toy? 3% is a, from 100% to 3%, somebody dropped a computer at that point. So that's why Drive Advisor is important because it can tell you about internal damage to your computer that you can't see from the outside. Drive Advisor is free. It is made by Schrock Innovations. The data that is collected by Drive Advisor stays with Schrock Innovations and is only used by Schrock Innovations to ensure that your computer is healthy. That's it. It doesn't get sold to anybody. It doesn't get shared with anybody. We use it internally to make sure that your hard drive is doing the things that you need it to do and that your computer is as secure as it can possibly be. So I would encourage you to install Drive Advisor. You can get your copy at driveadvisor.com. And remember, it's Drive Advisor because it's American. 888-250-2091. We're going to jump into those phones real quick. Barb, welcome to the program. How can I help you today on Compute This? Um, hi, Thor. I just want to compliment Nikki. She works in the Papillion Center. Yes, ma'am. And she's, uh, she is always very helpful to me when I come in. Um, I have a large uh, hard drive, and uh, she helps me carry it in when I struggle with the door. So I just want to compliment her. And also, um, I brought my computer in thinking that I could do the safe upgrade, but she said it's not released yet. Yeah, it's not time yet. And I'm sorry? It's not quite time yet. Right. That's what she told me. And uh, she also said that um, I'm uh, in time for the maintenance checkup sale. So she signed me up for that. And I really appreciate all those things. Oh, it's not a problem at all, Barb. You know, one of the things we had a, a meeting last week with our senior technicians and, uh, and one of the big topics in the meeting was, was me lamenting the new normal. And as I'm starting to get older, I'm 44 years old. You see, I'm becoming the old, I'm the old man of the service center because I work amongst kids. We got a computer recycled from 1981 and I literally asked the guys, when were you all born? They're like 92, 95. And I'm like, I was five years old when this computer was made. And I'm just like, and they're looking at it like, wow, what are these, these floppy things? And, and we, I, got, yeah. I got it to boot into DOS 2. And, uh, and then I, there was a chess game. And I'm like, there's a chess game on a computer with half a megabyte of memory. I want to play chess against that computer. <laughs> <laughs> and so I put the disc in there to, to get the chess game going, and it doesn't work. It says the disc is bad. And the guys are like, why are all, like, literally every disc they put in was bad. They're like, why are all the discs bad? I'm like, because it's magnetic storage. They, these things weren't intended to last yeah. forever. This, and then, and then, a, mm -hmm. then that's the same technology that we still use to this day to run nuclear missile launch silos. The, the five and a quarter inch floppy disc. No, I'm not joking. Mm -hmm. And the excuse is wow. it's super secure. <laughs> Nobody's trying to hack that anymore. But no, I, I really appreciate it, Barb, because we talked about this new normal about how um, at, with COVID, all service just stopped. You can't hold a door open for anybody anymore because you're too close to them. You can't go out to oh, wow. and carry something in for them anymore because you can't enter their personal space because you're going to you know, infect them or they're going to infect you. Uh, you can't carry things in for customers anymore. Um, and so I'm like, guys, I understand we have customers who are still concerned about these things and it's okay. I, I don't have a problem with that, but we need to start shifting our default back to where it was before, where we carry every yeah. computer out for a customer. 
um, where we, and there are some customers, we had an old man who insisted on carrying his own computer out. He had a walker and he literally, he was trying to go out the door with a walker and a desktop computer. And he almost, he almost, oh bit it. he almost bit it. And, uh, and I'm like, you know, there comes, a, and then it was in the papillion shop and I had talked to the staff. I'm like, we don't, don't ask anymore. Just grab it and pick it up. If you see a guy with a walker, don't ask him if he needs help. Just pick up the computer and carry mm-hmm. it out for him, you know? And that, that's the kind of service that we strive to deliver at Schrock. And Barb, I really appreciate you taking the time to let me know that, that Nikki is delivering the level of service that we want to have happen in our service centers. I appreciate it. Well, you sure do, and I thank you very much. All right. Thank you, Barb. All right. We've got to take our final break of the show, 888-250-2091. When we come back, we've got Bob. We have a lot. We have Bob, we have Steve, and also we have, well... Let's, let's start with Bob and Steve. If we get through that, we can go into more. Otherwise, we'll overflow into the aftershock. More of the show coming up next on Compute This. Today's fragile computers need maintenance more than ever. Your computer needs a maintenance checkup every six months to last beyond its 18-month expected lifespan. Every person listening to this broadcast has either experienced data loss or knows someone who has. When you think about it, you have a lot more data stored in many more places than you'd like to admit. Have you downloaded those videos from your phone, backed up the pictures on your iPad, or even tackled that sometimes daunting task of backing up your entire computer's hard drive? Most people just don't back up their stuff. And that's why Schrock Innovations has one of the most advanced data recovery centers in the Midwest. Equipped with the latest DDI data imaging devices, state-of-the-art custom recovery software, and Omaha's best data recovery technicians, Schrock Innovations has a 96.8% success rate when recovering data Data from damaged hard drives, flash drives, camera cards, and more. We all know we should back up our data, but if you are ever caught in a data loss nightmare, call the experts at Schrock Innovations to get your data back right where it belongs, safe and backed up on a stable hard drive. Compute this Pro Tip 578. Technology is constantly changing, so how can you tell when the time has come to recycle your old outdated computer and invest in a new one? Experts have rules of thumb and formulas, but Schrock believes the answer is simple. You should replace your old computer when it can no longer do the things you need in a secure way. For example, you should not be using operating systems like Windows XP or Vista because they're no longer maintained by Microsoft and they're not secure. And if your computer cannot run Windows 10, it's probably time to begin saving for a replacement. If your existing computer requires of repair and that cost is 50% or more of the cost of a new computer, it might be time to consider a replacement. But keep in mind, additional costs like data transfers and important software you have to upgrade like genealogy software or Quicken. And also keep in mind that modern computers are engineered to last 18 months for a normal user. And don't worry, you are considered a normal user. Schrock modular PCs and solid-state laptops are specifically designed to last four to six years for that same normal user, saving your family money and time. This pro tip brought to you by Schrock Innovations Computer Company. All righty, folks, welcome back into the program. Want to make sure I get to this story here before the end of the show today because it's really important. Uh, the United States government and its agencies were bypassing your Fourth Amendment right to privacy. Uh, basically, you're, you, it's not a right to privacy. I should be more clear about that. You you have a, a, a right to not have your personal effects rifled through searched or seized by the federal government uh, without a warrant, of course. If you have a warrant, then you, they can Rudy Giuliani all day long. But if if it's, you know, without a warrant, they can't just look. But there was a loophole, you see. All these people that are tracking you online and having all your cell phone data and your browser data and your, you know, your contact tracing data and everything else all aggregated together will sell that information to whoever wants it. And the federal government wants to buy the data. So you had intelligence agencies, you know, investigation agencies buying this data on Americans and augmenting their own databases with it. And it, effect, it was the effect of illegally searching and seizing data from thousands and thousands of, of Americans at the same time. Um, so there is a bill that's being proposed. I don't know if it's going to go anywhere or not. But there's a bill that's being proposed in Congress to basically – it's a bipartisan bill of all the things. It would force intelligence law enforcement to obtain warrants before buying Americans' data. Uh, It's Senator Ron Wyden, a Democrat from Oregon, and uh, Rand Paul, Republican from Kentucky, um, have this legislation that they're trying to push this through. And we'll see if it goes anywhere. But if it does, it will basically make it illegal for the government to buy the data – Um, which I don't know if that will actually stop anything from happening because it was illegal for them, I would think, to buy the data constitutionally to begin with. But 
this bill would actually put it in the letter of the law that they can't do it. So something to keep an eye on there as well. All right, let's jump into those calls real quick here. Bob, thanks for staying on the line there. How can I help you today on Compute This? Yes. Do you know anything about myinsuranceinfo.com? Is that a scam site? I was like, no, I I have no idea about your insurance info. I'm not the federal government. Uh, ah, no, uh, myinsuranceinfo.com. I have never, I have not heard of it. It sounds awful, awful scammy. Like, not scammy, like from a, a criminal perspective, but it sounds like a lead generator to me. Um, like some place where you would go and type in your information about your insurance, so they could shop your insurance and get you the best deal, almost like a like an insurance brokerage, almost. Okay, because they got a letter saying that my insurance had canceled or was not in. In effect, that with my uh, lender. Oh yeah, that and sounds. I know it was. That sounds like a scam to me. That sounds like something where they're trying to get you to switch your insurance provider over. We see that with domain registration as well. Thank you for the call, Bob. I appreciate it. Steve, final caller of the show. We're going to squeeze you in here right at the end. How can I help you today on Compute This? I'm talking about hard drives. I've got a hard drive backup that I always keep in, plugged in for file history. Okay. And how, how often should you replace those, or can you Drive Advisor those? You can. Drive Advisor will monitor all of your hard drives, whether they're internal or external. The only ones that it can't monitor uh, are network attached storage drives or NAS drives that are multiple hard drives that are combined together into one storage drive, um, and some tablet and laptop memory. Uh, doesn't doesn't work real well with Drive Advisor, uh, but for the any solid state hard drive or mechanical hard drive, Drive Advisor will see that on your computer and will report the health of that drive, the temperature of the drive, uh, any events that have happened that have been negative in the drive's uh, logs and history will also be reported there. The hard drives have always reported this data. It's just the manufacturers turned off the computer's ability to pass the information on to you. So with Drive Advisor, we're restoring that capability, packaging it in an interface, and then sending you an email on top of that. So you can see it on your computer screen when it goes bad, but we're also sending you an email when you have a hard drive failure. So the rule about hard drives is uh, it's a bell curve. They either fail really, really young, or they fail after years and years and years of use. Very few of them fail in the middle unless they get wet or they get dropped or they get impacted or something like that. Drive Advisor will tell you that that's happening in many cases before it gets bad. Now, Steve, I do have to throw one caveat on there. Um, you've heard of a widowmaker heart attack, right? Right. Well, hard drives can have widowmakers too. And when that happens, there is no Drive Advisor to, to tell you that's happening ahead of time. It's just going to happen. All right. Thanks for the call Thank there. You. I appreciate it, Steve. Rounding out the show, Barb, congratulations. You've got yourself a $25 Schrock Innovations gift certificate coming your way. I'll get Addy working on that for you on Monday, adding that to your Schrock account. Stay tuned for the After Schrock coming up next at facebook.com slash Schrock Innovations. And we'll see you next Sunday for another exciting edition of Compute This. This is News Radio 1110 KFAB Omaha. Online at KFAB.com. On your-